start lecture 33 the course is corrosion protection methods for the last few classes we have been discussing uh, on the change in electrode potential or the metal potential which is to be protected of course uh, either cathodically or anodically we have only talked about cathodically changing the potential so that means taking the potential downwards from the stable potential and we could see that that can be possible and the corrosion rate or corresponding anodic current density or dissolution rate can be reduced for the metal and uh, that can be possible uh, via two mechanism one is of course ICCP where uh, the metal which is to be protected can be connected to uh, the negative terminal of a DC power source which is external power source and that method is ICCP or impressed current cathodic protection and then we have also seen that for the sacrificial anode so there also the metal is to be protected that metal is made into a cathode or other way around we actually take the potential down same cathodic polarization where the active metal dissolves and the noble metal is protected and this active and noble metal in that particular solution uh, as per the galvanic series they are galvanically connected like just like iron and zinc or iron and magnesium so iron sits on the top of that particular series galvanic series in a particular solution let's say hot water solution or an acl solution where zinc stays at the bottom or magnesium stays further below then these two active metals can dissolve itself and due to that it will supply electron to the steel and the steel will be made into cathode now we'll talk about another interesting approach which is called anodic protection and in case of anodic protection we will make use of anodic polarization so let us look at that particular mechanism how it works so today we'll talk about anodic polarization and corrosion protection if we consider active metal and if we look at mixed potential theory let us see what happens if we increase the potential so anodic polarization means increasing the potential from the stable potential it can be either equilibrium potential or corrosion potential so let us look at that particular aspect let us say zinc in HCl and let us say it is a pure HCl so only hydrogen evolution is the cathodic reaction and zinc dissolution is the anodic reaction so if we look at the mixed potential theory this is log i let us say it is ampere per centimeter square and this is voltage or potential now let us consider this is at 0 0.76 minus volt and let us this is 0. Point, this is 0 0 volt for hydrogen evolution reaction so this is i0 for hydrogen on zinc surface this is correspond to e equilibrium for hydrogen let us assume to be one a zero zero voltage as per uh, standard reduction potential series and here it is e equilibrium for zinc and this is also a standard reduction potential now let us say this is my i0 zinc on zinc surface so i0 as you know that this is uh, exchange current density now if we follow the polarization plot so this is my e core and this corresponds to i core so zinc will corrode at the rate corresponding to current density at this point which is a junction point so let us extend this anodic part now let us see what happens if we increase the potential from that stable potential so which is E core so if we extend so let us say I am here 
I go to a new position, let's say this, another new position, let's say this. Since zinc is maintaining its active behavior, so that means as per Tafel equation, it goes on dissolving as we go the polarization on positive direction. So, this is anodic polarization. So, we see that dissolution rate corresponding to I A. So, these are all I A of zinc corresponding to zinc minus 2 A equal 2 electron equal to zinc plus plus. So, zinc will keep on increasing its dissolution rate and we have a greater and greater greater amount of uh, zinc dissolution. So, we cannot have any protection, the corrosion rate cannot be can, corrosion rate cannot be reduced. So, this is basically happens when uh, this basically happens this particular behavior that anodic polarization increased dissolution rate just like what we have shown here in case of active metal in electrolyte. Now, let us see what happens if we have an active passive metal. And this is of course, specific to composition of the metal plus specific electrolyte. Now, if we let us say in an acid solution, uh, let us say H2SO4, a steel shows uh, active passive behavior. Okay. So, then I can have this very nature. So, this is let us say log i now if the metal uh, let us say some metal metal m will show example letter and let us say it is H2SO4. So, let us say this is my equilibrium of that metal. This is corresponding to I 0 of that metal on metal surface and if that metal shows active passive behavior, this is my active passive part. Let us say this is this is anodic dissolution, and this is cathodic part for that metal. Let me just put it a little on the left side. Let us say we have hydrogen evolution reaction which is the cathodic reaction. Let us say it is maintaining
So, let us say this is the situation. So, this is the hydrogen evolution. So, let us say this is E equilibrium. hydrogen this corresponds to exchange current density of hydrogen on metal surface the metal shows active passive uh, part when you go for anodic dissolution or anodic polarization so that means if we go upward the metal will show very such behavior but uh, we know as per mixed potential theory if the cathodic reaction and corresponding polarization interacts with this anodic uh, polarization part in the active zone, then that will be my E core. So, the E core here corresponds to this very point and I core would be this one. And as we know that active zone is, so this is my I critical and from I critical to the E equilibrium, this potential range is active zone. And the next part till transpassive zone starts, that zone is called stable passive zone. We will see later that is the zone where we can also term it as protection zone. We will see later protection zone, it can be considered as protection zone. And beyond that, we have transpassive. Now, if we leave that system in the solution just like that, it will always have I core like this, what is actually indicated here. This I core will be followed and this will be my E core. And interestingly, if we do polarization, we will see that the polarization plot will look like polarization plot will look like this. So, in fact, how we, how we get it? I will just draw it and then wipe it off. So, this part will extend. So, if we draw with this color, so this will be I have just drawn a little off from that black line. So, it will be almost uh, uh, on top of that line uh, depending on the difference of I C and I A. So, this particular line corresponds to I C or the cathodic current density and this is I A and this experimental plot what we get since this I is nothing but I applied which is obtained by I C minus I A or I A minus I C depending on where I C is more magnitude wise or I A is more magnitude wise. For example, below this particular E core it should be I C minus I A and that becomes my I applied and beyond that line it will be I A minus I C because I A portion is I A, I A value is more than I C. So, that way we find I applied and take a log and then plot it. So, that should be the plot. So, uh, now if we start doing anodic polarization let us see what happens. So, anodic polarization will start towards this direction. Now, 
let us say I go to this level. Then I go to the maximum or the corresponding to I critical because I am going moving up. Then I go to this level, then I go to this level as I am moving up. So, my potential is gradually moving up since I am employing anodic polarization. So, let us uh, assign some value, let us say this value corresponds to 10 to the power 3 and this value corresponds to 10 to the power 4, this value corresponds to let us say 1, this value corresponds to let us say 10. Okay. Like that way if we keep moving on and this value corresponds to let us say uh, 10 to the uh, 10 to the power minus 2, this value corresponds to 10 to the power minus 4 and this is in ampere per centimeter square. So, what should be I applied as we go up? So, if I try to locate those polarization point, let us say this is 1, this is 2, this corresponds to 3, this corresponds to 4. Now, in case of 1, what should be my I, I applied? Ten to the power three minus ten to the power ten, so it becomes fine. This will be my total current density required at point 0.1. If I stay here, if I stay at that polarization, this should be the current requirement. Let us say what happens at point 0.2. I applied would be 10 to the power 4, which is this minus 1, because this is 1. So, it will be So, that means if you see that the current density requirement is enormously increasing as we go up and stay at those locations 1.1 1 .1 or point, uh, point number 1, point number 2, all those points if you would like to stay. There is a huge increment in current density. Now, let us see what happens once we approach 3. I applied would be 1 minus 10 to the power minus 2 and this I applied here all the two cases equal to I A minus I C since this is I A, this is I C and I C is negative because of its uh, direction. So, that is what I am taking a mod value. So, I am I am just bothered about the values magnitudes. So, now if I do that, so then 1 minus 0 0.01. So, the value would become 0.01 okay, ampere per centimeter square and so then point number 4 if I go I applied would be 1 minus 10 to the power minus 4. So, this value, so this minus this, I am just giving all those locations so that it becomes clear to you. 
So that way we have gone ahead and then found out those values. So this would be 1 minus 0 0.0001. So this is almost 1. Now what will be dissolution rate at this location which is nothing but I A is 10 to the power 4 ampere per centimeter square here 10 to the, sorry this is 10 to the power 3 here in at point 2 locations it will be 4 ampere per centimeter square here it is 10 to the power here it will be uh, at point 3 location it is 1 ampere per centimeter square here it is also 1 ampere per centimeter square. Now we could see that the current density corresponding to dissolution rate which is nothing but I A suddenly drops to a great magnitude to the level of 1 ampere per centimeter square from 10 to the power 3 or 4 orders. Once I take it, take this polarization to the passive zone and let us say I stay at point number 4. So, that means the material would or the metal or alloy in that particular electrolyte, electrolyte will achieve passivity and to maintain that passivity or let us say I would like to stay there for longer duration to maintain that position, that polarization, that particular very potential position. So, this position I, I would like to stay. So, then amount of external current I have to supply is of the order of 1 ampere per centimeter square. So, I have just given an example. So, this value would be of the order of milli ampere. So, let us say instead of ampere I put milli ampere. Okay. So, this is milli ampere even if it is milli ampere still 10 to the power 4 is a very big current density. Now, we could see that the, there is a enormous decrease in the requirement of applied current if we can take the potential to the stable passive zone and maintain there okay, or position there for a longer duration. So, material would dissolve at the rate corresponding to this value and which can be a very, very small quantity. Okay. So, this is the very principle of anodic polarization. So, here I could see that initial polarization will need a lot of current density that means applied current density is huge so that means you have to supply a good amount of DC power or DC current, but once it takes to the passive zone, the current requirement to maintain that passive zone would be very minimal. It is of the order of 1 millimeter per, ampere, per milliampere per centimeter square as per this particular drawing. So, you can actually this particular value sometime it goes to few micrometer microampere per centimeter square. So, now you can sense that the current value would be or let us say instead of milliampere let me put it as microampere. So, let us say microampere. So, still it will be if you see this value is quite large, but when you come to this value, it is a very small quantity, very tiny quantity of current we have to pass. But at the same time, so this is in terms of microampere. Okay. So, the 1 microampere per centimeter square, the corrosion rate is extremely low. So, if we achieve this particular position, so what are the advantage? I need corrosion rate would be order, order of 10 to the 1 microampere per centimeter square and current requirement would be so, this will be all microampere because we have considering in terms of microampere. So, the current requirement would be nearly 1 microampere per centimeter square. Now, we could sense that 
uh, by doing anodic polarization in case of actium metal, I see that corrosion rate is increasing exponentially because in the log scale uh, will be increasing very large uh, and at a very large large rate or large degree, but just like in case of zinc in uh, HCl. But once we go to this particular situation, I can get a very very good corrosion protection corresponding to the passive range by maintaining the position of the polarization at this location. So, it is better to low position uh, uh, position at, at, a, at, at a bit of away from this, this location where passivity starts. So, that even if there is a little fluctuation in the current potential rather potential, it would not come back to this location, this location. See, let us say there is a small amount of fluctuation. So, if this is the fluctuation in potential maintaining that potential, still it will maintain its position in the stable passive zone. So, that is what this is called protection zone. Fine. So, this is uh, uh, related to anodic polarization and having protection and this is only possible if it is active passive metal. Other way around is basically we are sending more amount of positive current or the line volt line current to the metal side. So, we are actually maintaining it all the time anode. So, in this case the metal which is to be protected metal is always anode. So, it and still it gives you protection or low current density due to maintenance of passivity. The difference between anodic protection here also uh, uh, we need external power source. And initial polarization actually needs a lot of current, but after it achieves stable passive zone, then the current requirement would go down drastically. So, the difference between anodic protection, let us say cathodic protection. So, this is valid in case of active metal. It does not matter whether it is active passive or, or uh, active metal. Since it relates to cathodic polarization. Now, here there are two situations. In one case ICCP we need external power source and here we need a constant power all the time and uh, the current requirement would be little higher than the current requirement for anodic protection when it achieves the protection zone. So, here current requirement would be higher than this once it achieves protection zone on, or once it or, or once the polarization takes the metal to the protection zone. So, ICCP it needs external power source, but sacrificial anode which also takes the potential of the metal which is to be protected to a lower value or cathodic polarization, here no need for external power source. 
fine. And both the cases this external power source should be DC or the direct current source, AC we cannot apply because in case of anodic polarization we need to send positive current to the metal all the time. In case of cathodic protection ICCP we need to send negative current or the electron to the metal for protection. So, we cannot switch the polarity. So, these are two basic difference as per our uh, mechanism goes. We will discuss more on the uh, how the arrangement is done and what are the situations where we should use anodic polarization, what are the situation where we should use cathodic polarization, those will be discussed as we go ahead. But at least if we try to look at the anodic protection where uh, uh, that can be possible uh, in case of let us say a, a big tank holding acid and uh, if the power source is cheap. So, then definitely it is better to go for anodic protection provided the metal shows active passive behavior and the passive zone corresponds to a very low current density. So, then uh, uh, my current density current requirement would be very low at the same time material would show a fantastic corrosion protection. But cathodic protection on the other hand uh, since we have sacrificial anode even if the power source is not available then also this protection may, method can be employed because here I only what we need to do we need to take an active metal piece and then connect it to the metal which is to be protected galvanically. Like let us say if you want to protect a, a sieve hull on, on the sieve hull you just put zinc inserts. Okay. So, those zinc inserts will be tagged to the uh, metal face and that tagging would lead to uh, protection because the zinc will dissolve and it will supply necessary electrons for cathodic protection of that particular uh, uh, hull material which is let us say steel. So, let me stop here uh, from next uh, uh, lecture onward we will try to look at some of the uh, examples practical examples of cathodic and anodic protection and also we will try to calculate uh, uh, anode efficiency and that anode efficiency we will try to do it for let us say sacrificial anode. So, we will try to look at for zinc as well as magnesium how to calculate anode efficiency or anode capacity. So, those will be in the form of ampere hour per kg of the uh, anode. So, that we will try to reflect and we will do some calculations. So, till then let me stop here. Thank you.